Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, My So-Called Healthy Life. Okay, so I wanted to do something a little bit different on this channel today, a little bit of a preview of what's to come. So after teasing it out yesterday in my video, I have decided that this channel's name will change and it will become Peterisms, and I am really, really excited about it, and thank you guys so much for the support on the new channel name. I think it'll make a lot of sense, and um, I think it'll just go along with what I'm going to be doing on here, which is that I'm going to be doing a lot of story times, a lot of like lessons from my life. Some will be just off the cuff, ad libbing them. Some of them will be blogs that I've written. I'm going to read them and then I'm going to comment on them. And so I was thinking about it today and I thought, I'm going to go back to the very, very first blog entry that I ever wrote in my entire life. And I am going to read it. And I have not read it, you guys. I haven't, I'm going to purposely not go back and read these blogs so that if I read them on here, I'm like sharing them with you guys for the very first time. So um, I'm really excited about this. And let me tell you, I, uh, the blog that I very first started was called Suicide Birds and Seahorses. And if you go to it, um, it's a, it's based on a dream that I had the day that my mother died. And so at the top of it, when you go to it, it says suicide birds and seahorses. It's still up on the internet. So you can go and check it out. And it says, it wasn't really a sunny day when I chased after a cardinal into a dark hole and found that what I thought was a cardinal was actually a seahorse with a red felt top hat leading me on a journey into the deep blue where I find myself every day floating past reefs and mermaids, rediscovering why I'm in these vast waters. And the dream was about, I was sitting by my mom's grave and I saw this, uh, <laughs> what was it? A, uh, uh, was a seahorse with a red felt hat. And he was like beckoning me to jump in with him. I think it was based a little bit on this children's movie that I used to watch called uh, The Water Babies. And it was a book that then they turn into a movie and it was like with real characters and then a real like actors. But once they drum jumped into the water, they became cartoon characters. And I loved this movie when I was a little kid and I actually still own it on VHS. But I think it's a little bit of that. And then I was like going, I think I, in one blog, I talk about it, but like I'm searching under the water and I'm searching for my mother. And what I'm really searching for is the chimes of freedom, which is a Bob Dylan song. And I woke up and I had had this just very profound dream and from it kind of spurned this blog that I was going to write, which was just going to be, you know, all of these discoveries that I made along the way of you know, my day to day in and out. And at that time, uh, what I would do is I would like go into my office and work and I would come home. My ex and I had broken up. My mom and I had passed away. I had left a career of 12 years, which it all talks about in this blog in just a second. Um, and cause this is kind of like the introduction blog and I didn't really know what I was doing with my life. I felt very lost and I felt very much like I don't, I didn't feel like desperate. I didn't feel like I can't go on. I just didn't know where to go on. I didn't know how to go on. And it's so interesting now. It's been, this upcoming year will be 10 years since my mom passed away. And next July will be 10 years since I wrote my very first blog post. And man, let me just tell you the road I've been on in 10 years. You know, to start a blog and literally get, I mean, I was getting five and six views per blog entry. And I knew at the time that like my friend Krista, my friend Scott, and uh, my friend Marianne were reading it. So I knew it was three people. Oh, and Tanya, so four people. But I was always like, who are the other one or two people that are reading this? And I had no idea, right? And it's interesting now looking at like subscribers and viewers and stuff like that, that I was getting like five or six views and two people, I had no clue who they were. I was like, who are those two people that are reading? My and I got so excited about that, you know? And then for that to turn into several other blogs that I've written and then to get, you know, turn into the website that my husband and I started together that was extremely successful. And we had so many opportunities as a result of it. We made very little money off of it. I mean, very little money did we ever make off the website. But so many opportunities that we've had, so many experiences that we've gotten to do together because as a result of that website. And, um, you know, then that spurned into me getting my book deal and writing my book. 
And then from that, you know, deciding that I was gonna get on BookTube, which then started my main channel, which then started my vlog and this channel. And so it's so funny because it's this whole interconnectivity of the world. And when I look at 10 years ago of me sitting in this empty apartment that my ex had cleared out like half the furniture, you know, the walls didn't have any paintings on it. And it was just this very sad time of my life. And I look at where I was then and where I'm at now and how happy and grateful I am for my life. I realize that everything that happened happened for a reason. And, you know, I say that and I don't mean that like, every little detail of my life happened for a reason. I'm very much a believer in this, that either things happen for a reason and there are lessons to be learned from them, or we'll find out at the end or not find out at the end that none of it meant anything. But me applying meaning to it now, what do I have to lose, right? So I always like to find the lesson in everything. And um, man, I look back and I think, it's like there's this you know red string that's been connected through all of it. So I was sitting around today and I thought, I am going to go back and read my very first blog entry. And I'm really excited about doing this. Um, I read the first line, and so then I was like, okay, I'm not gonna read the rest of it. So here we go, are you ready? Monday, July 28th, 2008. And uh, here is the picture that I actually, this is so funny, it's still my screensaver on my phone because it's like one of my favorite pictures of life of me. So there I was 10 years ago. Um, okay. So here we go, you ready? Hmm, where should I start? Well, I guess at the beginning. I'm not even sure that I understand the purpose of this, but I know eventually it will find me. Let's start, Halloween 2007. Unsatisfied, unfulfilled with my life, I sat on the porch in the Smoky Mountains at 2.30 a.m. with a friend discussing that I was nearing 40. And I didn't feel as if I knew what I was supposed to be doing, or better yet, wasn't doing what I felt I should be doing anymore. But I didn't even know what that was, I guess. My friend, a very wise yet unfulfilled 57-year-old, sat back, stared right into my eyes and said, don't wait until you're 57 and your husband sits on the couch all day long watching CNN news. It was the moment in Thelma and Louise when Thelma can no longer go back. Those words released me and I could not go back. Within the next few months, I left a seven-year relationship, which at times I am unsure was the correct decision, resigned from a job I had been with for 12 years and began writing a book. And then not one book, but two books, and now three. Oh, did I mention I'm also a recovering addict, and as such, I can't limit myself to any one thing. And then my mother became extremely ill and was in the hospital until May 14th when she passed away. And driving away from the hospital that night, Bob Dylan singing, Shelter from the Storm through my speakers, a bird swooped down and dove directly in front of my car. A suicide bird, I thought. But why would they take such a risk? For the excitement, for the test, the chance that maybe they would make it to the other side and maybe they wouldn't. Could these small creatures really be that wise? Swallow, sage, and maybe we were all suicide birds, putting ourselves in risky situations or taking chances to feel for one small moment that we were truly alive. And that's how it began for me through all this crap that has happened, although I've always known it served a purpose. I've begun my own nosedive in front of cars on the interstate late at night. It started with dedicating one year of my life to living freely, taking chances, going where I wanted to go, and not being afraid to meet new people. But now I think maybe this is the way it's supposed to be for me. Maybe I'm not supposed to sit like a bird on a wire, waiting for winter to fly south. Maybe I'm supposed to fly south now or tomorrow. But nothing makes sense and everything makes sense all at once. Suddenly, and I don't question anymore, or at least I try not to. Ha ha, I am not that arrogant. <laughs> and one thing I know is that the magic still exists in me. And that is part of my journey to forever stay four, wading through the creek behind our house, watching the sunlight hit the moss on the rocks, or seven, my mom and I checking out 20 books each at the library, or nine, and still now believing that somewhere, waiting way down beneath the still waters of St. Bart's or off the coast of Tulum, live seahorses who sport bright red top hats and sing Sinatra's Fly Me to the Moon. At least I hope. I hope they do. I think I'm crying because it's like so strange to me when I think about where I was like, you know, 10 years ago. And that I have this like such hope and this passion, you know? I say a lot, you know, in my vlogs, I say, I wish I had known at 19 or 20 
that everything that I wanted in my world, everything that could be possible, I could have that, you know, that sometimes I just want to stop time and I want to stop, you know, time from growing older because there are so many things I want to do in this world and there are so many things that I have left that I dream of and that I desire and, um, I'm really, I guess, crying out of joy because I look back on that and I think, God, what a life I've been given in 10 years. You know, if you had even told me two years ago before I was on YouTube that I would have four channels and I would interact with people and I would know you guys by name and I would read your comments and you guys would uplift me on a daily basis. It's just, it is so surreal to me. And yet it makes me wonder where will I be five years from now or 10 years from now. And I do believe that anything is possible. I love you guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye.